Uh, next, we'll go to our monthly budget report. Um, Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones and uh, Assistant Superintendent of Operations Deborah Jacobson will be, um, these are informational items. We'll start with our monthly budget report. Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones. Uh, good morning, Chair Huntsman, members of the board, um, staff and the public. Uh, this is the monthly budget report uh, for the Utah State Board of Education. Um, while uh, the report's being pulled up, so we can make sure that it's uh, front-facing or forward-facing, because I know we're virtual, um, I attest that the Utah State Board of Education is fiscally sound. Uh, we're able to meet all of our obligation, all of our known obligations and commitments for now and the foreseeable future. Uh, we have entered into the year-end close phase. Um, this month, May being the second to the last month of the current fiscal year, fiscal year 22. Uh, so we'll ensure that we um, keep the board advised on the year-end close activities and any issues that might arise. Uh, I don't anticipate any. Um, so again, uh, from a fiscal standpoint, the Utah State Board of Education is sound. Um, with that, Chair, um, I'll turn it over or back to you, sir, for any questions or concerns about the current budget. Uh, yeah, Deputy Superintendent Jones, can you speak to uh, the COVID update while it's in there? We're not having a formal sure. Part? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I, you know, I just want to make sure there weren't any questions on any of the sections um, uh, or any, you know, on any of the section budgets. So. Uh, with the COVID update, um, as board members will recall, Sarah Young and Sarah Hayward Howard had been giving um, in-depth, detailed COVID-19 relief funding for K-12. Uh, the decision is, is to provide you, the board, with the presentation, uh, but not go into in-depth detail on it, um, or only go into in-depth detail on it on a quarterly basis. Um, again, uh, it's imperative that uh, this too is public facing, that you have the opportunity to review it, uh, but we'll um, make sure that it's a quarterly update for you um, or to you um, going forward. Um, any questions or concerns with that, Chair Huntsman? Um, thank you for that update on it. I, this is all about transparency and we appreciate it being in here for facing for members. So, and yes, if there's a question, you can certainly ask at this time, but thank you for that. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, and so before we move off onto that, sir, as I, as I detailed to the board, um, it's imperative that I also advise the board on any uh, potential or future impacts to our budget. Um, one, uh, and this is informational only, uh, and it's in the interest of ensuring that you as board members are aware of what we're about to communicate to the field and it specifically relates to the waivers ending on the free and reduced lunch program. Um, so Chair Huntsman, um, if you will, will you please call on Director Britton for just a really quick summary of what we're planning on releasing to the field and why it's so impactful. It'll impact next year's budget, which you as the board have already reviewed uh, and you know, passed for, for fiscal year 23 but we wanted to ensure that you as the board were made aware as an information item on what's coming out um, related to the federal waivers for free school lunch to all students to end with this school year or so, you know, at the end of the fiscal year, June 30th. Will you uh, just recognize uh, Director Britton for two or three minutes, Chair Huntsman, so she can expand yeah. on this and then we'll open Director it up. Kathleen Britton, are you, are you good to join us? This is Jerry, she just got on. Okay. Kat, uh, so Director Britton, it's Scott, you may have just joined us. Uh, just for two minutes, will you summarize what the information is that's going out to the public for the benefit of the group? Director Britton? Yes, I'm here. Okay, will you, 
Thank you. Let me quickly summarize what, what the public release will be, please. Uh, so Director Brennan and Scott, you may have just joined us. Uh, just for two minutes, will you summarize what the information is that's going out to the public? Yeah. Hey, hey Director Britton, you need to make sure that you're not on the YouTube. I am shutting that down now. I close apologize. that down. So thank you, ma'am. Okay. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. Okay. So if you look at some of the notifications that were attached to the board agenda, the first thing is there will be a media release sent out um, next week by Mark Peterson expressing to the general public that all of the 100 plus waivers that were instituted during COVID will be ending. Um, all students will need to start submitting free and reduced lunch applications for next school year. The, um, there is access for the state agencies to submit for waivers due to COVID if there's a, another COVID outbreak or issues that are related to COVID within individual schools. We have submitted our waivers to our regional office and we're waiting to hear back. Um, the big caveat is there is no more federal increased federal funding like there was in the prior two years. So as you can see, the funding will go drastically down for these school districts. Um, they have received quite a bit of extra funding throughout the last two years to help during COVID. Uh, quite a few of them still have over a three month fund balance that will help get them through this next school year with the transition. Um, we are trying to push this out to make parents aware what's going to be happening. You can also see there's a handout um, that we provided to the LEAs that they can post on their websites and they can pass out to parents. Is there any questions? What questions from board members? Um, Vice Chair Belknap. Yes, Chair, I have two questions. One. Um, Director Britton just said that there's funding to help with the transition. I didn't really understand what that meant, how that's going to look. And the other one is maybe just simple on top of that. Is the free and reduced lunch also, has it been the same across the country and it's stopping all across the country? Okay. The free and reduced waivers that were um, implemented for the last two years were from the USDA nationwide. So as of June 30th, all of those waivers will disappear and they will no longer be available for the school districts. The increased funding they received during the two years, there will be no more increased funding starting the new school year. They will go back to the original reimbursement rate and they will get the higher reimbursement rate. Children will be served meals according to their meal eligibility, paid free or reduced. They did receive extra supply chain assistance funding. They received some emergency um, funding through COVID like um, the ESSER funds, but they received them through USDA. So that should help them through this next year. We have applied for waivers that help them if there's supply chain issues, if there's meal pattern issues, so that if they can't serve certain parts of the meal pattern due to supply chain, they can notify us and we can um, allow them to serve something else. Does that help, board uh, member? Yes, thank you, thank you Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, member Lear. I had two questions also. I think they're pretty direct. Um, may I address those two? Um, Director Britton? Yes, please. Uh, my first one is when you say waivers, I'm not sure what's being waived. Can you just explain that briefly? Yeah, sure. Um, the USDA waived um, eligibility, meal eligibility, so all students were considered free meals for the last two years. They also waived certain issues in the meal patterns, so if they could not get a certain fruit or vegetable. They also waived that you had to be at a school to receive a meal, parents could pick that up. So there will be no more parent pickup for meals. Students have to be in the building to receive a meal. Great, and then my second question is, yeah. typically I, didn't, um, I thought that families did not have to apply every year for the free or reduced status. Do they have to apply every year? 
I mean, they can't they can't have a carryover status from what was previously in place before the pandemic, or is it an annual requirement to apply? Director Breton? It is an annual requirement. Um, it was because of the last two years that everybody received a free, me free meal. They did not have to apply. Thanks. Super helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Member Norton. All right, took me a second to get off of mute. Um, I too would like to address my question to um, Director Britton, if that's okay with you, Chair. Yes, please. Okay, uh, just one quick question. Are you seeing, anticipating, hearing of price increases um, coming down the pipeline that will affect the price of the student lunch? Um, thus maybe changing the amounts uh, or, or where the thresholds are for free and reduced lunch to kick in. Director Brittany. Let me see if I understood what you're asking. If we are receiving federal reimbursement for the free and reduced, is that what you're asking? Or are you asking for a student that is a paid student? Um, if we have a student that that would only qualify or, or has qualified as a paid student, but now with increasing um, economic pressures, you know, that we're seeing nationwide and um, that that might change them into a free or reduced lunch, but also more importantly, uh, the cost of the child's lunch, you know, right now stands at $2 something, you know, are we anticipating that that, that student lunch price will be increasing. So it's about a little bit about inflation, right? You're talking about member Norton. Is there, you see something happening in that space? Member Britton? Um, yeah, a, a family can apply for free and reduced meals at any time. So if their economic status changes at any time during the school year, they can apply and receive free or reduced meals if they qualify. The income eligibility guidelines are set by the federal government and sent out every year. Those have been already sent to the schools. And so when they receive the application, they run it through their systems and they determine it. So if a family runs into some hardship, say come December, they can apply anytime. Um, a paid meal, uh, pricing for paid meals are determined on each individual level. There is a paid lunch equity that the federal government requires that they, they put the meal price in a formula so that the free or reduced price are not subsidizing the free meals. Thank you. You're welcome. Member Earl. Yeah, I just had maybe a clarifying question when you had stated if they're not able to get certain produce or certain items, they're having to actually call and get permission in order to provide something else is that did i understand that correctly so that is our meal pattern waiver so if for instance they um, have their meals set and their delivery shows up without the product that they were supposed to serve they can use that waiver they just have to let us know within a certain amount of time that they would like to use that waiver and most school districts are aware of that because they they sign up for it in the emergency situations. Sure. So it, this could be more frequently that they're they're not asking for permission. They're just notifying. Is that accurate? Did I understand that correctly? Correct. Our state receives the waiver. Yes. OK, thank you. Okay. Member Hymas, did you? Oh, I lost it now. Did you have a question? Well, yeah, if I, if, I'm just curious, does the, uh, so there's a, a waiver for the free and reduced lunch. Does that um, threshold change along with like inflation? I mean, we're, we're, here we are, we're talking about taking away um, free lunch for everybody, which, which I completely understand. Um, at the same time, inflation is going up quite steep right and so i'm wondering if there is something that we can do to help alleviate some of that burden if we can i don't know offer reduced prices for an, uh, an ex extension i don't know i'm just i'm wondering what we can do to help those who are who are going to feel the effects of this 
pretty quickly. Member Britton, did you understand the question? It's like, I think the question is more like, what more can we do? Mm -hmm. so there's yes. the inflation factor, the supply chain waiver. And then the third piece is um, with inflation and homeless and people's economic situation changing be because of some of these challenges. Um, are we ahead of it or is there something more we should <laughs> are considering well we're trying at the at the school levels we we have discussed with them um they are trying to keep their prices pretty stable we are probably one of the states with the lowest meal prices um, and that is due to the schools also receive a liquor tax per meal which helps defer the cost of that meal um, so that greatly helps our school districts um, the meal eligibility determinations are set according to the consumer price index and those have already been set and also um, so those will not change we are aware that this could hit some families right in the middle that are kind of stuck in between um, not qualifying and qualifying school districts can choose to use some of their money to help subsidize if they have a surplus they can pay for reduced and it's all but a school district's choice on how they'd like to do it Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Lear. Sorry to ask another question. Um, again, to direct to Director Britton, is that okay? Yes, please. Um, I, I wondered, I know that our school fees law, our state law, has some flexibility, some subjectivity in it for families who might be facing um, unusual circumstances and their fees can be waived. Do the federal standards allow for any subjectivity in terms of granting um, uh, reduced lunch status or, or free status? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't quite understand. Sure. I'm just wondering, I know our state law has some subjectivity in it for granting waivers for school fees. I'm wondering if the federal law has any um, discretion in it for a school administrator to grant a family access to free or reduced lunches, even if they don't exactly meet the um, standards because there's some unusual circumstances or something like that. Is there any flexibility in the federal or discretion in the federal um, standards? No, the omnibus law that did not include um, extra funding for this national school lunch program that took effect in the beginning of March. They were trying to allow some funding to get through this transition year, but it was not planned in the budget. So there is no more federal funding to, to allow these school districts to go through this next year. But also what I'm saying to no flexibility, like a a, a, a principal who's reviewing one of those applications or if wherever it's being reviewed they're they're they can't make allowances for for unforeseen or extreme circumstances is that right i think deputy superintendent scott jones may have an answer there yeah it, go, it goes along the lines of chair huntsman if i may for board member lear's question yeah, please. Uh, director Britton is right um and then if i understand uh, board member Lear's question. Ma'am, the, the federal guidelines are, are very strict. Um, you know, it's this is why it's so important for us to release this message so that parents and the and the LEAs foster an environment where we can ensure that the proper forms <coughs> filled out so that we can ensure that we're applying the federal guidelines and rules uh, for free and reduced lunch. Uh, uniformly and in accordance with the federal law. So the, the short answer is, ma'am, no, there's not the same type of flexibility you're seeing in school fees that, in here. But that's why, but this is why it's essential that, uh, and, and I applaud uh, uh, Kathleen and her, her team for, for leaning into this so much and getting this message out so that we have time before July 1 uh, to do our level best to make sure that we're communicating with the families so they can get us the, the data and information we need to make the right decisions and to support those children. Chair, that concludes my response to board member Lear. And thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Thank you, uh, Director Britton, for 
this this update and and doing all we can to make sure we stay in compliance with following that color of money and eligibility and it's all about making informed decisions uh, and we we knew this day was coming post post covid and so appreciate this report deputy superintendent jones is there any more on the section sir, of monthly budget report that you wanted to have a yeah, brief yes sir at your direction may we just proceed just real quickly to the discretionary funds report sir okay so let's let's move to the discretionary funds report is, is Deborah taking this one or? Is, no, I'll take it, sir, real quick. If we could just pull that up, it should be in there. I don't see. Is the discretionary report not in the backup? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yep. It's coming up. Okay. So, real quickly, Chair Huntsman, members of the board, uh, please recall that in the top, upper right hand corner of the report is your remaining balances. Um, those were significantly reduced recently by your decisions. If we could scroll down. Uh, into the main body of the report. Uh, you'll recall, please, that during your April 7th board meeting, you approved, if you could scroll to the, I guess it would be the left, so we can see the projects. Thank you so much. Uh, you approved the facility operations and maintenance, $100,000, the $10,000 for internal controls implementation. Uh, that's to purchase, you know, some basic software uh, to enhance our capabilities to implement our internal controls. Uh, the training for general and special ed teams, that's the $200,000. Uh, the anti-bullying, uh, that temporary FTE. And then the um, over-the-phone translation services, we're going to change that title uh, of that project to also be inclusive of the website development for translation services as well. So the next iteration of the discretionary funds report will have um, or recognize that you approve not just phone translation services, but website services as well. Sir, that concludes my report on your discretionary fund, subject to your questions or any questions from the members of the board. Questions, comments from, I'm not seeing any. Um, thank yep. you, Deputy. Yep. That concludes the monthly budget report item then. Thank you, sir.